bracket that appears here and a bracket that appears there. And when you copy and paste it back to the Wikipedia in that language, there's some work you need to do to correct all these little markup errors. Translations are good at this, you know, the syntax, the uh, coding language, and stuff like that. That stuff that just prevents that to potentially make a uh, lot more easier. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Pau Giner. I'm an interaction designer working for the Wikimedia Foundation. And I've been working with the, with the language engineering team during the almost uh, two years. And I've been working on, on language-related tools, uh, trying to design them in a, in a way that, it, that they are easy to use. And I found the language a really interesting topic because it's at the very core of our experience as, as users and if you think about it you see that language is what you really need to read, understand and write content which are quite basic things without uh, that if you try to to use any of our Wiki, uh, Wikimedia projects without being able to, to do them it's almost impossible and unfortunately not all languages are uh, fully supported to allow what I've said before. And there is a very little little example, it's familiar to me, that Spanish has this strange N that it's not available in uh, all keyboards. So the, the more your language is different from what regular keyboards are, are expected it to be, uh, the more problems you have. And as I've said, Spanish is quite close, so we have a few problems. If your language is much different than this keyboard, you will have a lot of problems. And we are trying to avoid these problems with tools. We are trying to avoid you to not being able to read by uh, providing you uh, fonts, that even if they are not in your local computer, so that you can display, display com uh, complex scripts. We allow you to understand by providing tools to translate so if you knew a few languages, we want to make the content available to you. And we also provide tools so that you can write, and not only contribute content, but also write when searching for consuming it. So that you can type in a keyboard which is not prepared by default for your language. Uh, the problem we have when, when designing these solutions is that there are lots of languages, and the different languages uh, have very different very different needs and it's also it's also hard to understand deeply those needs because we cannot speak all of these languages and especially these tools are if if they are useful for someone it's for this user that speaks only a native language in and has not a uh, most advanced uh, technical knowledge to install phones install on screen keyboards and we cannot access directly this user because 
does not speak English and has not skills to, to communicate technically with us. So, so what, what, and regarding the, the number of languages, just to, to put it in context, if you take uh, some international websites, this is the United Nations, they support six languages so that uh, you can consume content on, on di on from different, different regions. If you take YouTube as an example, they have uh, 61 languages. And if you take one article, such as the Obama article, you find that there are some more than that. <laughs> and not only this, uh, the MediaWiki itself supports more than 300 languages, and that means that the solutions that we create from a design perspective should work at this scale. And as in the first presentation we've seen, compared to the real number of total languages, this is a very few number of languages. So we expect to, to grow a lot. I'm just wondering what was about Pack Control. There's a line of blocks on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll come to that later. Right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, first I wanted to, to talk about how we, from the design perspective, uh, try to solve uh, problems in this, in this area. And the, basically, the, the, the idea is that we try to integrate diversity in terms of languages and cultures in each step of a user-centered design process. So I'll, I'll go quickly giving some insights. First stage is to understand the problem and we try to, to define scenarios that are not biased towards one specific, um, one specific language or cultural point of view. And so here for example to, to types of users that we designed for, for one of our projects. One is a, a monolingual speaker from Georgia and another is a, a musician from India who is abroad so he has problems when using uh, computers uh, in, a, in a different place. But we are not doing def defining those users by random. Uh, we try to identify which are the factors that could affect the user experience in terms of language such as the number of languages that you speak or whether you are in a location or the other and try to define some users and imagine which scenarios they can find uh, to cover all, all this possible all this possible space of, of, of complexity that comes from language or for other, other aspects such as whether they are using a desktop or, or a tablet. Another another stage of the design is when you are thinking on solutions and we try to also at that point, bear in mind all internationalization issues that also impact in the designs. Uh, one, one clear example is that text tends to grow when translated to different languages. So here is the same button for edit, when you translate, when it's translated to Malayalam, it becomes twice as large. So you, when you design the layout, you, you should think on how to, how to adapt things when text and the elements that you are designing can grow, so it doesn't break later. And another example is regarding directionality. So if, for those of you who are English speakers or, right, uh, or left to right speakers of, uh, of a language, you will, you will find this strange. The reason why is, is because our brain associate left and right with uh, before and after, or backward and forward, and this is an association that should be aligned with the visual elements. So, for example, here I put the elements on the opposite side so that uh, left to right speakers that are not uh, aware of this problem normally uh, that affects right to left speakers uh, can see what happens when uh, graphical assets that convey some directionality are not adapted. So that's what uh, Hebrew and Arabic people are suffering when uh, you don't adapt these graphical assets. Okay, in another st stage that we do is once we got us these ideas, we want to create prototypes which are not uh, non-functional, non just try to create the illusion that, that, that the tool is working to share it with users around the world and get their feedback. And that means that our prototypes need to be translatable. And depending on the kind of prototype, we do several different things. Uh, this is an example of a click-through prototype. This is just images that you click in one place and another image changes. So you can 
quickly create a prototype, but since they are images for translating them, what, what we do is to base them on SVG, use some uh, placeholders, and use some scripts to translate and have the images, the same images, ready for, for different languages. Fortunately, fortunately uh, we also, when we create uh, HTML based prototypes, what we use is the internationalization libraries that the language engineering team has, has provided, which allow you to do the same I was telling you before, use some uh, placeholder, and then the library is, is in, ch in charge of translating these, this text to different languages. Since this is a, a real library, it's more powerful than, than the, the script I was, I was talking about before. And the last stage of this, of this process is to test with users. I've said that we are creating some prototypes that can be tested and we try to expose to as many users as possible. Because most of the problems derived from languages are not hard to solve. They are hard to find. So if you present something to a native, native user, he, he probably can identify quickly what's going on. But for us, it's, it's hard to, to, to view this prototype from all, all from the perspective of all languages. So we try to, to test with as much users and as diverse as, as possible. So I was comp compiling some, some numbers of 32 users from seven, 17 locations and 30 languages, which are the total uh, users that we have been testing or, or, or different tools. And which tools I'm talking about? I'll go, I'll go now, one by one. By one. Uh, this is the, I'm going to talk first about the Universal Language Selector and the basic idea is to provide, as I've said, uh, try to provide access to language settings so that users can uh, have access to input methods, change their user interface language and uh, adjust uh, fonts to, to solve these barriers I was talking about and if you go to Wikipedia you will now find the standard icon for settings next to the language area that provides the, the idea that you can find additional settings, such as settings related to display that allow me to change to a language. So if I go here, I can go to Espanol and my all the menus will be coming in Spanish. If I go to fonts, uh, if I'm a speaker, in, uh, speaker of a language which is not properly supported and there are several open source fonts with different properties, I can select one of them, but uh, it's also useful for other many use cases, such as people suffering dyslexia. So we are providing uh, fonts and people can, can change and, and solve different problems, not only uh, specific of problems displaying, displaying their native languages, but also an example like, like this. And finally, input, regarding input methods, I can do the same, I can select and a language, input language, and then choose from different different input methods. As I said, this is a, a simple simple panel, but there are many interesting design principles behind it. If you compare, for example, how was user interface language did before, you have to to go through a list of all languages, which probably is not uh, quite scalable scalable if you if we consider all languages in the world. So what we are doing is to apply a pattern to anticipate the user needs. So we show only few languages, the three languages that are on top, and these are not random, these are based on uh, on user previous choices, these are based on the acceptance language of the browser, these are based on uh, some guesses from the GIP information. So it's quite likely that the user is, he just have to look his language in these three options, uh, or or if he, if he doesn't found it here, then he can go for more. And then we have a whole list, which has also some other, other interesting features to make the search easy, such as being flexible when uh, allowing you to type a language in a different language. So I can search for Spanish, type in the French name, I can make some typos, because this is a, a transitional process that you may be going fast through it, we can, you can use directly uh, language codes if you are an advanced user and yeah, we provide some auto-completion so that you don't have, you don't have to type the, the whole name. 
Another design principle is to provide tools at hand, provide them close to the, where they are. So apart from including these settings for changing input methods, we are providing an input method menu, which appears nearby the, the text area and allows you to, to quick search it, uh, switching because it remembers when you search, uh, switch to a different language, it remembers which input method uh, it was you were using before. <coughs> Yeah, also, uh, we, we took into account that if you do a mistake in this area, you may end up in a foreign language. So, going back can be hard. If you take your mobile phone, or you take the mobile phone of your friend and change the language to a different one, then he will have a hard time to, to, to go back. So, at different points in the design, we, for example, when you change the user interface, some quick tooltip appears that says the language changed from English, so if everything is in Greek and you see English world appearing, you you can go back if that was a mistake. Uh, when changing features, we try to preview them on the dialog. So if it's not what you're uh, looking for, you can cancel. And we were also including some tests in user testing where they had to go through the interface in a foreign language they didn't know. And once you've used these panel settings once, you're even able, there are visual clues that allow you to be able to use it even if you don't understand the language. So, these are the kind of, of things we, we are trying to to add to the design. There's another another project, the Translate extension, which basically basically uh, is an extension that allow both uh, user interface messages and some contents to be translated by a community of translators. And uh, until last year, uh, this was the the user interface and. What we try is to make the, the workflow more more fluent and, and provide a, a, a clear clear separation between the, the translation actions and the translation aids and also uh, yeah this is the, the the basic schema we have provided a clear translation area provide some aids for the translator that can include uh, suggestions in different languages but we are we as I said we, we were also providing these small details that allow users to, to be more more effective and help them in the in the languages such as uh, warnings that does do not block you such as uh, contextual actions so that we are providing aids such as pasting from source at the beginning or maybe uh, reverting things when you start editing so to to not pollute the user interface provide these tools just when they are they are needed. Also, considering length adjustments, as I've said, text may and will grow and avoid dead ends. So, if I go to an empty list, I get a message that the, the list is empty, but I have the next logical, the next logical actions also presented. So, if I want to translate for something and everything has been translated, I can go and proofread those translations, or I can go view the completed translations. And yeah, for as, as I showed before, the list of translate of messages is quite useful for sh short text messages. And we also wanted to to provide support for for wik so for wiki pages. And we created this view, which is the which presents a side by side source and target uh, text. And I present later what something that is the next steps in that direction. Uh, it's content translation. The only thing we have in this pro the previous projects are already developed, so feel free to play with them, report us back, uh, talk about problems that you have in your in your in the use of your specific language. But this one is something new, something we have some designs for, we have some ideas and we want to hear back from the community. The, the main goal here is to provide something, a tool, that allows uh, translators to create new articles as a translation of an existing article. So you can have your source text on one side, you can add, you can add some progress for translation, have the automatic, automatic translation as a template, and this template can include also already the links adapted, so if the source language is English and I have architect there which points to the English article, then in my suggestion I can have the, the, the 
same link pointing to the to the equivalent in this case in Dutch uh, article for for architect and yeah what what we are trying to do we are focusing the tool as a first time bootstrapping for a new new article and then uh, once you have this new article it can grow and translators can can uh, do advanced things such as styling here we are trying to focus the the tool in adapting content because nowadays uh, when observing how translators do this they this process involves a lot of tab switching copy and pasting getting lost adapting the, the input language thing so we want a tool that is focused mainly on adapting content and get rid of, rid of all these artificial steps of being you not a translator but an information carrier that just copies information around so we want to provide uh, all these these kinds of aids but uh, such as integrating for example suggestions from different different uh, matching translations uh, matching translation services uh, in, a, in a way that uh, although we work for example at a paragraph level that we allow to, to translators to switch between between them with sentence, sentence position uh, you can also also apply these suggestions because they are applied to a, to a small fragment there, there is a lot of a lot of technical aids but we are also focusing on on the educational and, and the way these tools should be used uh, and in things such as taking into account the amount the percentage of automatic translation versus the content that the, uh, the translator provided and if we consider that it's too much according to the to the quality of automatic translation, we can tell the, the user, okay, your translation has 95% of unmodified text. Please make sure that it reads, reads natural because this is not the purpose of translation in Wikipedia or in any other uh, uh, Wikimedia project. And we can, if he decides to publish as, a, as an article, to keep it in a category that allows all the translators to verify that this content is really of quality. So we are, we are focusing on this. Uh, try to help translators and try to help translators to provide quality content. And well, this is the for the prototype. Yeah, the the, the finally, uh, as I was I was telling from the beginning we need your help from different communities and ways to help. We are currently doing usability testing sessions for this content translation tool. And so we welcome you to part join, participate, and, and get us your, your feedback. There is also a page, Content Translation, where you can provide the feedback, and there's also a design mailing list where different aspects of the, the tool will be, will be discussed. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear any questions, doubts, or, or comments. Uh, well, with this project, one of the well, he was asking if uh, correct me if I'm if I'm misunderstanding if whether templates are also part of what we aim to translate. Okay, uh, with this project, our idea is to go really uh, step by step and be useful from the beginning, but be incremental and get feedback in each step from the community. So our plans are to not support initially templates. Maybe these templates can appear as a placeholder that you decide whether to include them and then you will adapt it, adapt them, or just to remove if you think it's not, it has no value. And then, uh, according to the use of the of the tool, you can later consider, for example, if we if we found that the gallery, uh, for example, that a gallery is worth translating because translating the labels makes sense, we can add support for this specific thing, and then go adding support for. For things that that uh, add more 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 value to our users. Uh, what about templates, references, um, like site web and all that kind of stuff? What about translating that? Um, yeah, but probably uh, adapting links and references are are some yeah links for sure. Uh, especially since Wikidata provides a lot of a lot of uh, power there to. What, what it's related to. Uh, references, providing support for, for more references, we need to, to still think, think 
about which is the pattern when adapting that from one language to another. So, uh, as I was saying, I'm organizing usability testing sessions, and half of them is uh, to ask the users to show me which is their, their current their current workflow because it changes a lot from user to user and from language to language, and and seeing how users adapt a specific templates, which problems they have, what they need, and which kind of adaptation they do is essential to, for us to, to figure out and understand which kind of support to provide. Um, to go back to the big links, because you mentioned that you have a connection with Wikidata, has it been, uh, does it offer suggestions for the links themselves, or do the translators have to choose the correct word for linking to an article proper, or how exactly is this work? Um, okay, well, the the way that we were thinking on link adaptation basically is that uh, if the source article has a link to uh, another article, when we are uh, providing a machine translation suggestion instead of doing it with plain text, it can include the link. And, and if the source link is, if, if the source article to which the, the link is pointing to uh, is connected to another article in Wikidata, we can make this link to point to that, and also offer the user the possibility to, to just uh, remove it if you don't want, or maybe even to mark it separately if that makes more sense. Uh, sorry, regarding, regarding uh, the testing, uh, actually I have come from the one of the top 10 page visits to our system of the videos, and I have found my language in this of 30 or 30 languages that we are trying to check, and we have our own diatrics and things like that. So could you please review us again your, your list of the languages that we are checking? Because there was a lot of exotic things, and I don't know, and I think that not all. Uh, well, the the way we are currently working is we publish the a form for users to to join, and then for, based on this list that people that voluntarily want to participate in testing, we we try to select according. Uh, since in the form we ask for the same questions that I I show when when describing our scenarios and uses, we try to to choose which users fit the purpose of a specific test. If we are try to find problems with new users, we may select some. If there is a group of users with the same language, because adapting the prototype is also uh, a also the more people we have in this list of volunteers for participate, the more the more diverse that we can that we can can make or, or test things. So just to clarify, it's not our goal to have testers from top 20 new languages. It's our goal to have uh, testers across the huge groups that we're targeting and they may or may not come from particular languages. But if you're volunteering yeah, everyone is welcome. I mean, even uh, even if even a, a single lang uh, language speaker, we can we can make and take important information and perspectives from from him. Yeah. Uh, well, ideally, if you can speak two languages, one that I know so I am able to communicate, for example English and another that I, I don't know, it doesn't matter, you can participate in translating and I'll adapt one text to, to another language based obviously on Google Translate or, or however I can, can adapt it and then we can, we can test it and, and see which problems and yeah, even if it's not possible to adapt uh, just seeing which is the process that a user is following for translating, it provides us a lot of information.